skating. It's what makes ice hockey one of the most difficult sports to play in the world. Straight line sprints, turns, forwards, backwards, puck protection, and deception. All great hockey players are great skaters, and all great hockey video games have great skating mechanics. When you take the EA NHL franchise as a whole, you can separate the past 20 games into five distinct generations of skating mechanics. NHL 2001 to NHL 2003 is the first generation, when skating mechanics and animations were simple and easy, but also very limited. NHL 2004 to NHL 08 built upon the basics of the previous generation by revamping the speed burst system, adding in stops and starts, and improving the skating animation blends while deking and hitting. The next generation of skating began in NHL 09, when the franchise moved to the new Xbox 360 and PS3 consoles. This was probably the biggest leap in skating mechanics as EA leveraged the new technology to create all new skating animations and mechanics. Four years later, NHL 13 introduced the True Performance Skating Engine, which remained in use until NHL 18. The fifth and current generation of skating mechanics begins in NHL 19 with the new Real Player Motion technology. So with the timeline complete, let's dive into the actual skating mechanics and see exactly how things have changed over these past five generations. Let's start with the basics. Skating in its easiest and simplest form is when you're going forwards in a straight line. The first generation kept things perfectly simple with quick, short strides with the puck still under complete control. However, this skating style gave these early games a very arcadey and one-dimensional feel. Starting with NHL 2004, EA revamped the speed burst system to allow users to really accelerate and explode past their opponents. They also added more realistic mechanics to the franchise, like how players could push the puck ahead with one hand on the stick. This allowed players to reach their top speed faster, but the trade-off was reduced puck control. The move to the PS3 and Xbox 360 consoles opened up a lot more possibilities for the third generation. Players were skating more realistic than ever, but the feel wasn't as satisfying as the previous generation. There was virtually no speed burst system during these years, so players felt sluggish regardless of the player you were using. However, these games built the foundation for the next generation starting in NHL 13. At first, NHL 13 was groundbreaking with its trademark True Performance Skating Engine. Player explosiveness, momentum, and a new physics engine completely changed the feel of the game. The problem was that skating remained relatively the same right up until NHL 18. Although these titles had the most realistic skating engine to date, it seemed like the pace of the game became slower over the years. Now, six years later, EA released their newest skating engine which they're calling Real Player Motion Technology. The fifth generation of EA Sports NHL skating engines begins with NHL 19. With more precision, explosiveness, and variety in player skating styles, skating has truly become a skill in its own right. Users can really feel the explosiveness of a player's first few strides, and the best skaters in the game are finally starting to feel like their real-life counterparts. When you're first learning to skate, going backwards can be a bit more of a challenge to figure out. I guess the same was true for the developers, since you couldn't purposely skate backwards with the puck at all in the first two generations. Sure, AI players could skate backwards sometimes, but there was no way that you could willfully skate backwards on your own. Fast forward to Generation 3, you could finally control how your player was facing with the new vision control mechanic. This allowed players to always face the puck when without it, and gave players more tools to make plays in both the offensive and defensive zones. EA also added in new backwards crossover animations, and over the years, transitions from forwards to backwards became more seamless. Generation 4 built on the basics that Gen 3 had put in place by making forwards to backwards transitions seamless and giving users full autonomy on how they could control their players. Puck control while skating backwards was also improved, giving users the ability to change the direction of their players quickly and allowing for more creativity and deception in competitive online gameplay. To be honest, NHL 19 doesn't really bring anything new to the table in this department. One minor difference is that players use crossovers more often and that strides look slightly more explosive, but overall skating backwards is largely unchanged between Gen 4 and Gen 5. I'm honestly surprised at how long it took EA to implement fully autonomous, user-controlled backwards skating. I mean, I'm just glad it's all figured out now though, because it's such an important tool that the top players in the world use effectively at both ends of the ice. In my experience, turning is one of the most important skating mechanics. In the arcadey days of Generation 1, turning looked unrealistic and sometimes even downright impossible. However, despite the lack of authenticity, 
it helped these games feel fast-paced and exciting. Arcade-style gameplay continued on through the Gen 2 titles. Turns were still super fast, but there seemed to be a bit more effort involved with players pumping their legs to keep their momentum going. However, the physics in these games still needed a lot of work. You could literally turn on a dime for hours and not lose any speed. Generation 3 was a big step up in how it looked and felt to turn with your player. Once again, players seemed to be able to turn on the spot forever. Not gonna lie, it felt great being able to turn so quickly, but it also made the physics in these games feel old and unrealistic for the times. The True Performance Skating Engine helped elevate the physics of the Gen 4 games to a whole new level. Momentum was now a thing, and players needed to carry speed into a turn and continue to pump their legs or else they'd come to a complete stop. This was a tricky spot in the franchise because although it was the most realistic to date, the trade-off for speed and agility hurt the pace and overall flow of the gameplay. Now as we've progressed into Generation 5, turning is the most realistic it has ever been. Updated friction and momentum physics means that players need speed and legwork to keep themselves going in tight turns. Although this does slow down the gameplay, the new explosive strides help players in NHL 19 accelerate to their top speed quickly and compensates for the slowness of the turns. Over the years, turns went from defying the laws of physics to abiding by them, perhaps a little too strictly and it looks like NHL 19 may just be the perfect mix of speed and authenticity. Stop and start mechanics also have a large impact on the pace and flow of a hockey game. In the case of Generation 1 games, it looks like the EA developers forgot to start working on these skating mechanics altogether. Thank god you can turn on a dime to make up for it. Stops and starts were implemented at the beginning of Gen 2 in NHL 2004. It was a good start, but there wasn't enough friction because players with only a few strides behind them took what felt like ages to stop. It was really cool though how the later games added a new between the legs animation when you'd want to do a full 180 degree stop and start. Starting in NHL 09, EA took advantage of the technology in the new consoles and I have to say this was the best skating mechanic in the Gen 3 games. They looked totally realistic and it felt like you had really precise control over your players. It felt like your players were exploding out of their stop rather than going top speed from the get go. And carrying into NHL 13, this mechanic didn't change much because it didn't need to. The only difference between Gen 3 and Gen 4 was that players became even more explosive. With the combination of the true performance skating engine and some new crossover animations, stops and starts are the best they've ever felt. And in Gen 5, you can really see how powerful NHL skaters are as they explode from stop to start and take those first three or four short choppy strides to accelerate. As the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Except for those sweet little between the leg stops, EA. Don't be afraid to add those back in. Last but not least, we have the most innovative skating mechanic in the EA NHL franchise. Inspired by McJesus himself, NHL 19's real player motion technology is all about speed and explosiveness. Back in the day, they had some cool little animations here and there. You'd occasionally see players doing crossovers to help generate speed, 45 degree cuts were a thing for a while, but it never became an important or useful mechanic. Insert Connor McDavid. Nah, nah, not that Connor McDavid. This Connor McDavid. These new animations are by far my favorite part about the fifth generation's RPM technology. It looks super realistic and it helps players generate momentum and keep it because of how fluid all of the skating animations tie together. Another big leap forward in Gen 5 skating is the addition of different skating styles. Now, players will skate differently depending on their skating attributes as well as their height and weight. Look here at how McDavid skates without the puck. His strides are quick, choppy and explosive. Now compare that to someone like 6'9 Zdeno Chara and the difference is clear. Chara's strides are slower and much longer. The best news about all of this is that you won't see a player like Chara catching a player like McDavid on a breakaway anymore. This mechanic will change the way users choose their teams, build their teams, and play with their teams entirely. After a simple childhood and a confused adolescence, EA looks like it finally got his act together and has produced the best skating engine to date. Now I want to hear what you guys think. I want you guys to comment down below which EA NHL game had the best skating engine in its history. And if you want me to make more videos about other aspects of the EA NHL franchise like this one, then be sure to drop a like on the video down below and subscribe so you don't miss any more NHL 19 videos from me this year. Thank you so much for watching guys, I appreciate you all, and until the next one, I'll see you guys then.